This week's video is all about photosynthesis and we will be using some basic science to create an experiment that will allow us to visualize oxygen as it is produced by a single leaf over a span of 30 minutes. Then using some math and some human anatomy, we will determine how long it takes one leaf to produce a single breath of oxygen for the average human. And if you want to do this experiment at your house with the leaves around your home, all you're going to need is a glass jar, a Ziploc bag and a straw, some baking soda, and of course a few leaves. And speaking of baking soda, I need to take just five seconds and to thank today's sponsor for our video, Arm & Hammer Baking Soda. Arm & Hammer Baking Soda is the only baking soda that Dave, we use- I forgot to tell you that they neglected our sponsorship request. Why? They said we didn't have enough subscribers. The CEO also said to please stop calling them. That is the last time I buy name branded baking soda. To do this demonstration, the first thing to do of course is to go out and find some leaves. After a brief search in the woods, my daughter chose this one, and my son, who never misses an opportunity to stick his head out the sunroof, Ooh, it's like some of my body is a car. chose a leaf from a branch hanging over my wife's car. The initial goal in our experiment was to stop the ongoing photosynthesis that the leaf was already performing. And since photosynthesis is a well-known equation of a plant using water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight to give us oxygen, we were going to start by doing the best we could to remove all the sunlight and carbon dioxide that the leaf had access to. And in doing that, it was our goal that we could start this experiment from scratch. To do this, we took our leaves inside and started off by sticking them in a Ziploc bag. We then used the straw to remove as much air surrounding the leaf as we could. And as you can see, just sucking out the air from the Ziploc bag using a straw does a pretty good job of creating a makeshift vacuum. And in our demonstration, we will be submerging the leaves in water, meaning they won't have access to carbon dioxide like they do in their natural environment provided by all the animals around them. Next, we covered the bag with tinfoil. So now our leaves are not exposed to sunlight and they have very little carbon dioxide to perform the photosynthesis reaction. For this demonstration, we will be submerging our leaves in a buffer solution. And that means our leaves will not have access to carbon dioxide like they would in their natural environment provided by all the animals around them. So to give the leaves the carbon they would require for photosynthesis, we added a heaping tablespoon of baking soda, also known as sodium bicarbonate, into the water and gently stirred so as to create as few bubbles as possible. Once our buffer solution was prepared, we placed our leaves in the water slowly and carefully to keep from creating many air bubbles. It helps to attach something small like a clamp to the stem so it stays submerged and this will allow for a better visualization of the oxygen as the experiment is ongoing. Then we started our timer for 30 minutes assuming photosynthesis would begin pretty much immediately since all the tools were in place. And the last thing we did was take our bottles outside to be exposed to direct sunlight. Then it was time to wait and it was also a good time to go explore the woods and learn more about the photosynthesis that we were studying in the reaction. And this is also a good time for me to tell you at the end of this video I'm going to show you why doing a demonstration like this is so beneficial and efficient for homeschooling families, especially if you have kids of multiple age groups. Now that the 30 minutes had passed, it was time to determine how much oxygen our leaves had actually produced. And to do this, we walked outside, took pictures of our jars with the leaves inside of them. Then we downloaded those pictures onto our computer, studied them for a little bit, picked the best and clearest picture, blew them up, printed them out, and took them to the table. Once we were at the table with our leaf photographs, it was time to start counting the bubbles. Admittedly, this was the most boring of all the steps, but since we homeschool, I most definitely logged it as time spent with mathematics. But to make this exercise a little bit easier, since the oxygen bubble creation on the leaf was pretty uniform, I divided the leaf into four sections, had my kids only count the bubbles in one section, then we multiplied by four. Averaging the number of bubbles that each of my kids counted, we determined there was 270 bubbles in each quarter on the leaf. Multiplying 270 by 4 giving us the total number of bubbles equals 1,080 bubbles. So according to our counting, during the first 30 minutes of our experiment, our leaf created 1,080 bubbles of oxygen. Now it was time to determine how much oxygen that really is. Setting up a proportion measuring a specified distance on the leaf in our photograph, along with the diameter of one of the bubbles, and then measuring the same distance on the actual leaf allowed us to set up a proportion to give us the actual diameter of the bubbles produced by our leaves during this demonstration. With this math, you can see that the diameter of one of the bubbles, which was pretty 
much the same size of all the other bubbles that were created came to two millimeters. And since we know the diameter of our sphere of oxygen, we can find out the radius. The radius is of course one half times the diameter. And what is quite fortuitous for us in this demonstration, the radius of our oxygen sphere turned out to be one millimeter, which makes the subsequent math problem that much easier. That problem of course is to take the radius and actually find the volume of our sphere. We can do that with the volume of a sphere formula, which of course is four thirds pi r cubed. And when you substitute one for the radius, you see that in each bubble of oxygen, according to our math, there is 4.19 cubic millimeters of oxygen. So now we know the volume of oxygen in each bubble. We also know the number of bubbles that were created by the leaf during the 30 minutes, which was 1,080. Multiply that by the volume, and you can see over a span of 30 minutes, our leaf created 4,525 cubic millimeters of oxygen. Now that sounds like a tremendous amount of oxygen, but when you convert 4,525 cubic millimeters of oxygen to milliliters of oxygen, it's actually only 4.5 milliliters of oxygen, and that's not a lot. Most kids around six, seven, or eight years old will understand this because when they have to take Tylenol or other medicines, it's usually about five milliliters, which of course is not a lot, but try to get them to say that's not a lot. So in 30 minutes, our leaf created nine milliliters of oxygen. Now the question is how much oxygen does the average human need when they take a breath? These are the lungs of an average human being as they are visualized using a CT scanner in a hospital setting. And it turns out every time the average person takes a breath, they breathe in about 500 milliliters of air. Now notice I said air and not oxygen because oxygen only takes up about 20% of the air that we breathe with the rest mostly being nitrogen and there's a few other gases like carbon dioxide, argon, and others. So if oxygen is only 20% of the air and we breathe in 500 milliliters of air with each breath, that means we're actually only consuming about 100 milliliters of oxygen with each breath. Now getting back to the oxygen that our leaf produced, in 30 minutes it produced four and a half milliliters of oxygen. To make the math a little bit easier, over an hour, our leaf creates nine milliliters of oxygen. And with each breath, if we need 100 milliliters of oxygen, dividing 100 milliliters of oxygen by nine milliliters of oxygen an hour finally gives us 11.1 .1 hours. It would take our one leaf here 11.1 .1 hours to create enough oxygen to give us just one breath of life. So with that in mind, it is a very good thing that according to this Scientific American article, plants are the world's dominant life form on the planet. So now that we have our answer, I clearly need to say no incredibly accurate scientific equipment was used in this experiment. There were several opportunities for assumptions and errors at each step in this process. I started off this experiment assuming the bubbles in our jar were perfectly spherical. However, when you look closely at the video, you can see they weren't actually perfect spheres. They were more like domes. So if we use the volume of a sphere as the basis of our calculation to come up with 11.1 .1 hours, but in reality the leaf was only using a half of a sphere or a dome, it probably means that the leaf needs twice as much time to create a breath of oxygen. Additionally, you can see at times tiny oxygen bubbles would escape to the surface so they weren't included, and there were additionally a lot of assumptions using our proportional math to come up with the diameter of the bubbles with tiny inaccuracies in our measurements and the angles of the leaves when we took the measurements could clearly insert some error as well. The point to all of this is it is a fun way to get your kids engaged in math and science and if you have multiple kids at different age groups you can tailor different parts of this demonstration to different age levels and capabilities for example in my case with my younger kids we just focus on the introduction of the idea and photosynthesis and plants consume carbon dioxide and release oxygen for us to breathe and for my older kids you can do the exact same thing but get way more technical in the math it's an all around great demonstration. It's also a great way to get your kids to start thinking about the importance of plants, the rainforest, and overall eco health. And this is a great time for me to remind you to subscribe and I'll see you next week. And speaking of baking. Dad. Oh wait, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what we talked about, why do you have a sock on the table? Use around your house. Then all you're gonna need is a glass jar. Air conditioning. <laughs>